Hey, what's up everybody? Zach is back with another episode of Journey to a Million Dollars and we're actually getting closer to our goal. Let's go ahead and take a look at everything going on right now. Um, I'm actually up and uh, by the way, the uh, write-up is live on ProStockAdvice.com. Link in the description if you want to check a look, take a look at what I'm looking at right now. Anyways, it looks like uh, S&P 500 is up. 0.7%, NASDAQ 0.5, Dow Jones 0.64. was a pretty good day overall. My uh, most recent notable picks, if you've been paying, a lot, paying attention to the blog and the Twitter and everything that we're calling out and giving tips on to buy, no matter if it's commons or options. Well, the MVIS, which we wrote about yesterday and we called out, is actually went up 25%. So that was a pretty successful pick. STPK was last week, but today it is up 18%. Didn't get a chance to buy in on that one, but it is what it is. Hopefully you guys uh, got a chance to get some options or even just comments for Star Peak Energy. And if you did, go ahead and send me a screenshot of those gains. And if you do that, I will shout it out on Twitter. And GEVO is up 17.5%. I think that's still going to be a good pick. Obviously, it's up a lot right now. But if we can get into this a little bit cheaper now, so we're going to wait for the pullback, of course. We're going to take profit if it hits 25, 50, 100%, and leave one to run to the lotto with. But also, we will be watching the, these successful ones also pull back for another possible entry, no matter if it hits support higher. But always on the watch list, which is up at the top right here, you can see all the entries and targets of everything that we've been talking about. All right, and now let's look at my portfolio personally for the journey to $1 million. Currently, I'm at 726. It was a pretty good day. I was actually up 4% yesterday, so I beat the S&P and NASDAQ by a lot. And mostly that is thanks to SOXL and semiconductors. My semiconductor position of, it was an option position of SMH, is recovering a little bit, so that's good overall. Plus my SOXL was up almost, was maybe 10% or more. So that's awesome because those were down last week if you don't know. So we're good, we're good. Overall it's good. I expected if you watched the video from earlier or yesterday, we were talking about, um, well we lifted the the warning on the entire market pullback. We lifted that after it corrected um, last week or the week before. And last week was overall flat so we were expecting the markets to push up a little bit this week. But nothing too big. And here is a master list of my options positions in case you want to look those over. I think that a lot of people actually have been requesting me to, um, they would just like to know all of my positions. So, of course, I always use this spreadsheet anyways. And if it's if it's got a strike through, that means it's already closed. And um, so, yeah. And then the SP and BC, that sell put, buy a call, buy a call, sell put, SC is sell call. So that's like a covered call. Just simple as that. Strike cost that I got in it. I got in it for um, expiration date, of course. How many? If it's negative, then it's going to be the selling instead of the buying, like the covered puts and covered calls. And here is when I sell them off. You can see I start taking profit. And yesterday I took profit when my MU hit 20, 25%. So I actually took that. I closed one of them only. Um, so like I said, I closed at 25, 50, and 100%. Maybe you let one ride. But we'll see if it's 75, 100% for the third one. But usually I like to get at least four contracts and sometimes maybe eight. So then I would do 2, 2, 2 instead of 1, 1, 1 or something like that. Like just in nice increments so I can just easily keep track of it. Although it doesn't matter if you're, if you're doing this on Excel, which I recommend. And if you need this spreadsheet, I can send you a link for sure of the blank spreadsheet. And you can put in your own your own um, options positions. And then up here has a running total. And this is since January 27th that I started uh, tracking these positions specifically. And it will always be updated uh, every single day. And actually, the rolling of the Tesla call was done down here. So actually, I rolled that because I didn't want to get assigned on my... I sold some Tesla calls. I didn't want to get assigned. So I took a loss of 760 on that. But then I rolled it out and got a premium of 960, so I was up only $200. It is what it is. All right, and let's move on. So 
if you were watching the live stream when at the opening bell I live streamed today. So if you were watching that, guys, I appreciate you, first of all, for tuning in. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And I will try to do it more often, maybe a couple days a week for now. And in the future, if there's a lot of demand for it, then I can do it every day. It's not a big deal for me because I'm going to be doing this stuff anyways at my computer and trading. And if you guys want to see it in real time, like it's cool. Or you can just follow my Twitter. Please go ahead and link in the description. Go to my Twitter. Give me a follow. I post the actual trade. I post the screenshots of the trades from Weeble. And if you guys want to trade along with me, Weeble, link in the description. You're going to get four free stocks right now. One of them is actually going to be Facebook. Um, so it could be a good opportunity for you to be on the same broker as us. And this is most people in the community are in my community right now. And they're trading on Weeble. And uh, it's just convenient to everyone to be on the same broker so it looks the same and everybody's clear because all the different brokers, they all have a, a different UI. But anyways, nevertheless, let's go ahead and move on to... if you, Well, anyways, if you want to take a look at these, go ahead and take a look at these. These are the ones that got canceled, that didn't get filled, which is quite a lot. It was my Apple vert spread, the Tesla, I was selling some more Tesla calls, didn't get filled, which is fine. Um, Lee, which is pulled back. $30 right now is still in my buy zone. It's on the bottom part of my buy zone. I think this is a good opportunity because those cars are nice and they don't make robots noises, but uh, unlike the Neos. And then the SBE, I wanted to take a profit on that actually and it didn't hit, but it's getting close. Also, the MU is up to almost 50%. Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and to go to the next part and this is what we are adding to the watch list, the official watch list. It's going to be PSTH. We were talking about this one in the live stream today, and I want to go ahead and add this one to the watch list because this is a SPAC managed by billionaire hedge fund investor Bill Ackman, and I had been watching this one for a while now, um, and of course, this gets a lot of attention if it's Bill Ackman is managing it, so for sure, and not to mention SPACs are just in general getting a lot of attention, so I, I do want to officially add this to the watch list now. As you can see, it has run up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for this to pull back into my buy zone and then wait for a bigger push towards $40. So my target price is $40 entry. Like I said, I'm going to wait possibly around 28. And once it's around 28, I'll probably be looking towards buying commons. I'm not going to participate in the FOMO. That's not for me uh, because there's a lot of FOMO around this one. So just be careful. I put this at a risk of a five, even though I really like the fact that it's managed by Bill Ackman. And it's just going to get a lot of hype in general. Um, but still, I will be putting this at a 5 risk pretty much because mm, all SPACs are going to be a 5. Especially this one is just in the rumor. It's not even in the rumor stage. There's no rumors of any merger. I cannot find anything online. If you guys can, let me know in the comment section, please. And while you're at it, go ahead and drop a like on this video. I'd appreciate that. And it helps me out for the YouTube algorithm. And that's it, guys. Time frame, 2 to 4 months. You know, we'll see. Let's give it some time to develop it, especially if it pulls back. But, I mean, that's pretty much it. There's a lot of other good picks that we did from yesterday's write-up. So, go ahead and click this link right here. And you can check it out if you haven't already. Uh, but, I wanted to go ahead and worth uh, add some into this write-up that are worth mentioning. Although, not going in too deep because we've already done the analysis pretty deep on these. But, anyways, it's going to be DKNG, DraftKings. We expected this one to pull back. So if you see, we were expecting this pullback. And this was a graph that I had posted on the write-up from um, last week. So I expected it to pull back. And sure enough, it did pull back. And it just grazed the top of my buy zone. And again, if you were on the live stream, you know what's going on here. And we were thinking about buying it. Although I want to watch it a little bit more because this was just the run-up to the Super Bowl. And so it pulled back after the reality set in for investors. And they're taking some profits. There's nothing wrong with that. So I think this is a good time to buy it because I do think this is still going to be a triple digit stock. It will be making a push towards $100 soon. And there is a rumor that it might have some sort of partnership with the NFL. So overall, just keep watching this one. Um, but this was a good call. This was a good call. It was a good pick overall. And if you got into it, congratulations. I think that soon it will start breaking out towards 100. Although, let's keep an eye on it. 
for sure. I will tomorrow. I will be looking to get into some midterm calls, maybe more than six months out. We'll see though. I don't want to put so much capital into this one, although it could be interesting to do a vertical spread, maybe a year out. So this also could be interesting. Well, and then the next one worth mentioning is actually going to be Apple. We're talking about this one a lot. It's actually undervalued in my opinion. I think it's easily 150 to 180. Personally, I think it's going to be 180 dollars by end of year. Although I'm pro, I might start taking profits at around 150 and looking for a correction and buy some more. Just really depends. So we'll have to reevaluate it at that time when it hits 150. But at least that's the first point I will reevaluate Apple at. But um, I try to get into some vertical spreads, as you guys know, if you're watching the live stream. But those didn't get triggered. So it's unfortunate, but I'm also interested in leaps. I think this is a good one to throw a decent amount of money on overall. And the last one is iPod. A lot of people are asking me about my iPod position. Now, I, I would like to say again, keep in mind, guys, the risk of one to five. Five is the riskiest. So if anything is a five, for me personally, I'm not going to put so much into these positions. I'm not going to allocate so much money and go so big into these positions because they're too risky if it's a five. Now, of course, it's up to you to decide by yourself and think about what your personal risk tolerance is. But in my opinion, the fives are the most risky, so I'm not going to put as much money towards them as, for example, Tesla, Commons, or Apple, Leaps, or something like that. Those are lower risk, so I'll put a, a decent amount more money. But nevertheless, this one is pulling back, and we're down about 30% as of right now on this call. So if you guys are following along, it's okay. This is normal. 30% down is not that much for options, although it can make you nervous, especially if you put more than you should have into these positions. Of course, I'm not going to tell you exactly how much money you should put in. I'm not going to tell you exactly what price you should be. Um, I just give you an example of what I'm doing, and you can take it and run, or you can do what you want with it. Um, but that's just me personally. So going forward, keep in mind, the riskier ones, I would put less, but that's should be a given, though. You know what I mean? But nevertheless, let's look at the technical analysis really quick. And it is still hitting this support. Now, keep in mind, this was when it launched. It's bounced off three times. One time it dipped under it, and it dipped to the super trend. And remember, my super trend is a, just a normal standard uh, standard 7.3. Um, so that could be some sort of secondary support. Although I think today it will bounce because it did start coming back up a little bit. So overall, I think there is nothing wrong with this position. I might dollar cost average. Again, I might get some more. I might possibly roll it. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to be looking at this one tomorrow for sure because we are down 30%. But you know, to be honest with you, I'm also down a decent amount in the Apple calls, which is, hey, Apple is not performing very well right now, but hey, it is what it is. And luckily, we have some extra time on those. This one, the iPod, we don't have as much time. It expires on the 19th, but it is two weeks. Two weeks, well, it's 10 days. It's not this Friday, but it's the next Friday, for sure. So we still have a little bit of time. So let's just keep watching it overall. I mean, nothing wrong there. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this. Go ahead and smash that like button. Go ahead and subs uh, follow me on Twitter. And if you're making money from our picks, send me a screenshot because I will shout you out. I really appreciate that. It's going to help me grow overall. And go to the bottom of the blog make sure you input your email address right here don't forget because you're going to get the email notifications whenever a new blog is live so guys don't forget about the new discord server i linked that in the description i also linked that on this write-up but anyways guys i hope you have a good day and i will see you guys on the other side peace